You still do intros? Uh-huh. Huh. Well, I film them. Sometimes I don't do them. Sometimes <laughs> I don't. Hello, everyone. I am here with Corey from Aquarium Co-op, standing back there. And uh, I've been here a thousand times, but I realized I've never shown you all this place. I don't have a tour on my video, so that's or on my channel. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna go through and see what he's got. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna start here on the turtle tank. Sure. Lots of tests going on. Uh, have a, a bubble bar in the back that we've made out of actually, well, I'll grab a, another one here. It's made out of <clears throat> irrigation tubing or drip tubing that you'd have in a garden. Now this is specifically made to do this, but you can do it with like Home Depot stuff. <clears throat> what we did was put some end caps in and drilled through, put a little piece of airline tubing and then it's weighted, so it's really heavy. So I bought, let's see if I can do this without breaking into a million pieces. We bought steel rods, but that's what makes it sink, because if you just put air through this thing, it's going to float the whole time. And so there's like a three foot rod in here, stainless steel rod, and all the air goes through, it'll bubble out kind of like that. The longer it is, the harder it is. We haven't perfected it yet. The smaller one worked out pretty good. Uh, maybe someday we'll actually do like a DIY video and all the tips we learned, but that's kind of what's going on in the back. And it looks super cool if you put light on it. So the, the bubbles in the back look okay, but whenever you put light on bubbles, it looks really cool. So if I turn one side on here, so now you can usually really see the bubbles. Oh yeah, it makes a big difference. And, uh, but I'm not sure that's the look I necessarily wanted. I wanted it to be more blended in. We had it covered with sand with the turtles digging it up, so there's that <laughs> problem. Um, we're also playing with hornwort because they'll eat all the other live plants. So I've got some fake plastic Vallisneria. He's leaving the hornwort alone, but it's not getting quite enough nutrients. We're changing too much water for there to be a lot of nitrates in there, but not enough water to keep the pH high enough. I just found out today that during this summer, unlike other summers, my pH is much lower out of the tap. So. I'm gonna have to change water more often, which is gonna make this struggle, which means I gotta uh, dose more fertilizer. So it's always a changing thing. I'm gonna turn this back off before I grow way too much algae. But my turtle, Elmer, in here, Fly River Turtle, he's growing slow and steady. Eventually, he'll get ginormous and need a much bigger tank. But for now, just trying to keep it you know, open, let him let him swim around the cupido cichlids we caught in Peru, so we caught those, caught those myself. And uh, they'll dig pits, but no actual spawning behavior yet. So we're hoping that they'll do that, because that would just be a cool, cool thing to be. You caught them, spawned them, took them to the shop. And then my favorite fish, the Variatus platy. And right now it's actually changing some water, because since I noticed the pH was low, we started changing water, and you might hear a little bit of ticking sound. That's what's going on. Right over here, it's calibrating water so that it comes in at seven. Right now, it's really hot outside, so it's going, it's struggling to keep it at exactly 78. And so it'll flux between 79 and 78 a little bit. Um, scientific grade thing, really expensive. Probably wouldn't buy one again because a shower valve and that kind of stuff does the same stuff, <laughs> but I know that now. Now that I've spent, you know, it was like $900 or something. Now that I've spent that, I know $900 is not better necessarily. Um, and the water is just coming in on this corner over here. I'll feed you in a minute, Mer or Elmer. So that's what this little line is. You can see it above the return for the FX4. It's just squirting in. And then uh, on the other end, maybe you can get a, some video of that. On the end, other end, we've drilled the tank and it'll be coming in. I'll, I'll show you where it's uh, right here. And you can maybe hear it a little bit of the water draining. So it's a flow through system. And this is basically how every single tank in this building is set up this way. So um, it, basically with an app on my phone, I can change water on any tank for any amount of time. The only thing I have to watch out for is running out of hot water, which isn't a problem in the mm -hmm. summer. But in the winter, I can change for about an hour, hour and a half, depending on which tanks I'm doing. Uh, straight before I have to let the hybrid water heater catch back up. So I've got a water heater that actually sucks heat out of the room in my garage. So it helps keep the, the bill a little bit lower. All right, so we got a whole row of tanks here. Yeah. How many? 
I, 14? 12, 14 ish? Yeah, some, I can't remember when we originally planned it, but yeah, normally I would do this row kind of first and I bring a couple foods. This is actually one that, so I'm always usually testing a food that says E on it. I tore the label off because I can't show you guys yet, but this is meant to be a budget type flake. And so the goal would be quality, but at a lower price point, hopefully. And this one's feeding out really well. My wife fed it uh, yesterday and she's like, what is this food? The fish love it. And I was like, that's great feedback because uh, I, sometimes I get a little too into the weeds, like, do they love it as much as they love, like, krill flakes? Do they love it as much as this? Um, but these guys are super red long fins, uh, which I have normal fin as well. There should be babies in here. This is definitely another tank where you have to stand here like you don't exist to see them come out. Otherwise, they'll just stay under everything, and then you almost have to shoot it from the other side of the room. But then you'll see a bunch of plecos out here. And they're just using the little, they breed in the little aquarium co-op caves, which they'll breed in almost anything. So it's not like this one's magical or anything like that. This is a 40 breeder for one neon tetra. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I missed one and uh, I'll turn the light on here. Oh, I unplugged it, so I won't turn the light on. <laughs> so I gotta put a little bit of flake for this one little guy, which eventually I'll move to the 800 gallon with the other ones and the snails are in here. So we're just gonna get a little bit of food and we'll move on. This is my old pair of albino crebensis that have grown up their, their children and now they want to pair off and I've just threw in a bunch of crypts. The goal is to plant these and redo this tank. I'm testing out uh, multiple things. So put some food in there. But like this pink thing on the sponge, that is a 3D printed air stone diffuser for our sponge filters that we're developing. And so the goal would be that it would never ever clog and obviously we wouldn't print it in pink and everything. Like that's, <laughs> it's just what happened oh, to be on the printer not? at that point. Um, but we're testing them in some of the ponds, some of this, and right now they work really well. And people are like, oh my gosh, I want to buy that. When can I get it? And the answer is when we finish testing, we're only like four months into it. I want at least a year of like, yep, not clogging, doing amazing instead of like we put it to you know manufacturers, we got it printed and a year later everyone's going, hey, this clogs. So we're really working on the testing there. But that's just one big Anubius, some coconut huts, and mostly this is a holdover tank from the old fish room that I still have a soft spot for these guys and because I have more tanks than I do fish, I don't have to get rid of them. So for now, they just live there and I'll build them a better home with the crypts. Nice. But I grabbed them when I was at the store one day these are crazy gross frogs uh, if I breed them or if they breed for me I guess when they mate they will deposit the eggs or at least they become deposited in the females back and they hatch out like all those gross horror movies you would have seen these guys are a pain because they have to eat frozen um, they won't take any dry foods for me so I always have to double back and grab frozen food out of the freezer over here and these are the Peepa Peepa frogs. Yep, they are. Yeah, and if you look back right now, you can see some of the plecos starting to come out. If we move too much, they'll, uh, they'll run away, but they're out and about, so. Usually I get to the end of the run, I come back, and then I get to see them is what happens. So these guys just get two cubes of frogs. When it thaws and sinks down, they go kind of crazy for it. But for the most part, I've basically kept them like they're just bigger versions of African dwarf frogs. Oh, they're moving over. Yeah, they smell it. That's... <laughs> that Molly's like, I'm not food. But to me, they, they kind of remind me a lot of like feeding oxalotls where it like has to move by them and then they're like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to eat. That's what I do here. And for some reason, the pellet food doesn't trigger that in them, I find. Maybe I just haven't found the right one yet, but. Oh, that's way better. As you can see, they're so graceful while I swim. <laughs> oh, but you can see like these two guys, they've been bumbling around, still haven't found any food. Like they're not very <laughs> astute eaters. Like they're just like, that's kind of why I have to overfeed. Like two cubes is kind of a lot for this, but you know, I'm pretty sure that guy is like out in the middle of the forest when his buddy's waiting in line at the drive-through. Like he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, it's 
They're, they're derpy little guys. All right, so what's the story with the one goldfish? Yeah, this guy I don't feed. My wife does, but the whole goal, like I've done a whole video on this, why I, love, why I keep goldfish around, but he's got green poop. I'm using him to de-duckweed my fish room. It's going very slow so far. <laughs> yeah, because I've got multiple totes filled with duckweed, and uh, it's one of the best foods he could possibly be eating, but his size is small. So, you know, it'll probably be another two or three months, and then all of a sudden, he'll whip through all this, and I'll move him into one of the totes over here, and he can do cleanup for me. So these are kind of neat. Yeah, these are some blue platies. Let me see if I can get this light working, because I just plugged it in. Mm, let's see, mode, yeah. So, what you'll notice, it'll make this light look terrible, but it's super cloudy in there, and I've been testing really overfeeding shrimp, because I learned from some of the breeders and stuff in Germany about we're way underfeeding uh, shrimp. And so the colony keeps exploding. You'll notice we have Corydoras in here, we have the platies in here, and yet, tons of shrimp. Now, we also have very cloudy water because I'm feeding so heavily. So there's, a, there's pros and cons to all this, but from a purely like fish farming standpoint, I think it makes sense from a, a vanity, does this look cool? Not really, but I've been feeding pretty heavy, testing the theory of, you know, shrimp really want to be eating all day long. And uh, so I'll feed multiple times a day and quite a bit. Like this is as much as I basically put into Elmer's turtle tank there. But you'll see them, you know, really kind of jump on it and just testing. Most of my day is actually just testing. And uh, I don't know why. I guess I enjoy it, but I like it's to fun see to what experiment. Stuff will do. Yeah, I like. You know, people don't feed your shrimp too much, they'll die, this and that, and then you go and you visit breeders and they're like, people are starving their shrimp to death, here's what I would do, you start trying it. You know, even like in this tank, it happens to be doing well with the, the mangrove, doing well in this one. We're like, this one, duckweed killed it. Like, so you just see a lot of, and as you go down the road, you can see more, some are doing really well, some are in between. And so I get to see what, I wonder what's different about this 40 breeder with the same light, a little bit different fish load, that caused this one to thrive, this one to die. So yeah, this, this light though is the, the latest prototype for the aquarium co-op one. You can dim it. So it went down one, two levels, three levels, four levels, five levels. So you should be able to dial in pretty easy. And uh, you know, it's gonna have that nice get in the water, super water resistant feature. So I've tested it up to 30 minutes, not out of problem. And so, basic features, good light, Yeah, that's strong. money right there. Yeah, so that'll be coming in the next, you know, few months. And uh, we're still tweaking cord lengths and other stuff, and we improved the PAR, we made it brighter, and all that kind of stuff, so. In fact, I'm gonna turn that down before I leave it full up, because that'll grow a ton of algae in here and ruin my experiments. Turn it down like that. All right, so in here, this is because we're breaking down totes on the other side, so these just get to live in here for now, but this is uh, the pygmy swordtail and a few longfin gold white clouds. Oh, that male looks pretty good. The, uh, the white clouds suffered a little bit because that's all that was living in here, and they were not wanting to eat, and they were hiding. Once I put the other fish in, now they're putting body weight back on. These guys will eventually just go all to the store, and some other live bear nerd will probably geek out and buy some and then the rest will get ignored like normal so <laughs> you know because they, they weren't the blue one and that's the one I wanted but I took a chance and you know that's the way it goes some of them have some nice yellow in their fins though yeah they're the yellow version and but even you know even that yellow is like yeah I mean it's all right but it ain't like oh wow I need yeah that. it's not like so jumping out but that's full thing. grown so that's kind of a cool thing they're a nano sword tail if that's what you're into yeah that's pretty so. neat I've never seen one of those Ooh, and here's a couple of my favorite fish. Yeah, the trout goodyids are my one of my favorites. I had to track these down. I've been on the wait list with Greg Sage for years, and he hasn't really been producing them that much, so I had to buy them from a guy that had got them from him. And I haven't. I don't think I've gotten any fry out of them yet, but uh, I paid a ridiculous amount of money for these fish. For these fish. I bet, with especially shipping, at that size. Yeah, I, with shipping, everything was close to 200 bucks. Oh, I no. hope those are waterproof. Nope. <laughs> Hopefully it'll... Yeah. Did water get in? Yep. That'll happen. Oh. 
I'm gonna put this over here before it dumps out rotten food like in another day. Can't bring Bob anywhere. Also, Corydoras in here are one of my absolute yeah, favorite fish. Yeah, Aspidoras. Yeah, what did I say? Corydoras? Yeah. Aspidoras, yeah, that's what I meant. This is like the, what, the six something? Six ray, I think is what they yeah. call the common name, yeah. So, trying out the foods that are eating it. That one guy spit it out once. I like this, uh, this pearl weed that's just been growing floating. I hope it's going to be the perfect fry station when they do start having fries. So I haven't planted it or moved it. It just started out as one little sprig and it grows. So I always tell people in live streams and stuff, you can grow stem plants by letting them float and then they just do this, all these roots. And so really all you would do is float them when they come in from like us or somebody else. And uh, then you can start taking these kind of finer leaf plants and planting them because they've got roots now. And so even if you just take cuttings and you float them, they'll always grow roots downwards. And that's how, it's one of the easiest ways to propagate. This plant probably wouldn't get enough light because we're lighting it from the ceiling if it wasn't floating. So yeah. um, if you're ever struggling with light, one way in the interim would be to float it. And that helps sometimes, so. All right, moving on. We've got the best Ooh, guppies in the world. Best guppies in the world. So I like these guys. I've, I've originally, oh, he's going for two on the feeders. <laughs> I originally got these from Michael's Fish Room. Well, not originally, but uh, the ones are here. I bought a trio, one didn't make it through shipping, then I had a pair left, and now they've populated to this. Uh, very, well, I would say very male heavy, but the reality is I haven't looked close enough to see if um, they're all exactly males, but you know, I'll probably have to cull through here, bring the males, leave all the females, and uh, just keep working with them. A lot of algae going on in here. One of the downfalls of this fish room is the skylights. The skylights come through and they put a lot of extra light here. So as the sun moves, like late, earlier in the day it would be on this tank, but right now it's about one o'clock. You can see it's on these totes. And so good for plant growth and everything, but uh, will grow algae if you don't have enough plants. And so you can see even in this tank, all the valor and everything's growing at the front of the glass where it comes through as mm -hmm. opposed to behind it. So not optimal, fine for breeding, um, but I haven't gotten in here and gotten rid of the algae because algae actually I think is very good for an aquarium and the fish. Especially fry, yeah. in my opinion. So I don't, you know, I don't go out of my way. If I, you know, I could have if I was, you know, better at my job when we were filming today, but I also like to show you know, not every day is present this aquarium to the world day. You know, there's days when you clean up your aquariums for film and then there's other, there's the in-between days. And so the mag float that I use is right on the next tank because I was experimenting with uh, kind of heavy foods in here as well. Um, I'll actually, I'll grab a secret food. I won't show you what it is. I'm testing it someday, maybe secret. I'll, uh, but I'll put it in there and you can watch what it does. Wow, this guy's nuts. One of the shrimp? Yeah. He looks real good. All right, so I'll put this food in there. And I've been putting a lot. So again, you might notice, I don't know if it'll come across on camera, but the water is a little cloudy. I've been putting a lot of food in here to try to really get these tiger shrimp to take off. And I would say for the most part, they have been. Because what happens for me a lot of times is, I think I started with 10 and I got up to like 50 or so. And then I just stay at 50 for months and months and months and months and months because I don't really change the amount of food I'm putting in. So now I'm trying, let's put a way more food in and I'm noticing way more babies and everything like that. And I haven't run into any problems and uh, the valve started to grow. This valve was always like one or two sprigs. And now that enough food's going in, it's actually starting to populate. And, uh, but yeah, this food kind of disintegrates and makes it very easy for the shrimp to pull off and run away. And it's light and fluffy, so. There might be some day where we launch something like that. But as you look in the corners and everything, you'll start seeing just more and more shrimp and uh, they're making their way to the food, but yeah, they blend to the hunt. Yeah, they, they do blend and, you know, eventually I'm gonna put the new aquarium co-op lights on all of these because they're so much easier to see the fish and inverts in there as opposed to the shimmer effect and everything. And, and it'll be easier to control the uh, the light from the skylights and everything. Not that we're gonna block them, but if we have a better source of light, it'll work a little better, so, yeah. All right, looks like more guppies. 
Yep, this is a test that lived on for too long. These are like some tuxedo guppies that had Camelanus redworm, so that's a parasite, and we used Expel P to get rid of it. And there was a few fry, we, we put all the adults and sold them back at the store. There was a few fry in here. They've grown up to adults and now had babies. And now I should probably just get rid of them, but I don't have anything else to put in here. So I just keep feeding them. And I go here, eat, and then make more babies. And then whatever. Again, lots of algae, cause there's no substrate. There's no plants. Like <laughs> we're just algae farm here in this one. Oh, I see some more good eds. Another test. This I had to get super bad so that I could test uh, Fritz's slime out, which gets rid of cyanobacteria. So no cleaning or anything that's going on in this tank in a long time. Totally got rid of all the cyanobacteria, so that was good. We were able to prove that it worked. And then I needed to make space, so I moved these tequila uh, goodyids over here. She's going to have some babies pretty soon. And then there's also the tanginique and eel. And then I also had one random pea puffer, and since I usually feed uh, some bloodworms in here. I thought, let's throw the pea puffer in there for now. So I'll put some pellets in. The giant, giantest pea puffer I've ever seen. A few pellets. I'll have to follow back up with uh, bloodworms later. Looks like a baby Amazon puffer. He's so big. Yep. Yeah. All right. So behind you and the totes. All right. Starting the totes. Black El fish and a black tote. Yeah. El Tigre and Lairs. Thanks, Dean, for unloading all these on me. <laughs> That's the problem is I become the, hey, you got room. Um, so normally I'm feeding some monster pellets and they'll, they'll eat that pretty quick. Um, but I'm, since I'm testing some flake, I'll put some of that in as well. I like to see lots and lots of different type of fish and just like, are they eating it? Is it there an hour later? Like what's going on? Um, just get feedback. Cause that's, if I can feed a hundred tanks, that's a lot faster than just seeing how one does. This tote does something interesting this is actually filled with just water and fertilizer. So when I do a water change, uh, water goes throughout all the totes, all the tanks, even the 800 gallon, and it's siphoning in some of the water from this. Now, I basically, every time I fill this up, I put a whole bottle of Easy Green in it. And so it's fertilizing every tank in here, but as some of the plants get more and more robust, like, it's not quite enough. These are a light green versus like a darker green and that kind of stuff. So I might need to, I, I probably need to feed more. More food needs to supplement that. But that's what's going on with this toad. It just sits empty and long term, it'll go like under here, uh, which I could show you guys this panel. So these are all sound panels to deaden it in here. And then down below is where my air system is. Now, I have a battery backup. This is the OMK, wait. OKMO. Okay, they sent it to me for free, so a disclaimer, it was free. The first one actually, the ballast to recharge it had a problem. I gave that one to Dean. He got a new ballast himself and it works, so that's cool. Uh, but what I like about it is this, uh, if I unplug, this will run. So I leave it plugged in all the time. If the power goes out, it will run one of my air pumps for five days. Wow. So. I haven't had a power outage that long, but if it's a day, I know it doesn't run both. I only have it running the small one normally, but even if I get the five days out of it, right? Like that's, that's a big difference. So even if I get one day, it's a peace of mind thing. So I just leave it plugged in, ready to go. Something like this is stupid expensive. They're like a grand or more. Um, I wouldn't buy like a baby one. I don't think it'd be worth. A lot of them don't have, so the feature I wanted that this one had, and the only reason I agreed to even like play with this thing from the company, was that it would work as a standby. I've got one that's like 1600 bucks that won't do that. It won't, like the minute the power goes out, just keep going. It doesn't have that feature. So this had the feature that I actually wanted to test, and now I've been testing it for nine months, something like that. Because the, the first one failed like in three weeks, and I was like, <laughs> I will never tell, like, if I tell people about this, it's not gonna be good for you. Now we're at a point where I'm fairly confident, like, yeah, they had one bad ballast, it's been going well, Dean's working well, and so if you wanted to buy one, sure, do it. It's not like I, you know, they're, it's an expensive gadget. I feel like I got testing for three years before I'd be like, buy this $1,000 thing, but if you're in the market for one, 
I do like it quite a bit because it's got this functionality. So, and I, I own like three different kinds, so I haven't tried them all, but this is a pretty good one for as much as it failed the first time. Yeah, I have one that when the power goes out, you have to go turn it on and it's very annoying. Yeah. Like, what if I'm gone? Well, and that's just it. You know, I want one that had enough battery capacity to run for a while. I think they make one smaller one, but it's like, like a hundred bucks less. And so I would just buy the bigger one if you're already like a thousand bucks into something. Yeah, that makes sense. Nothing. Ooh, nice. We've got rainbow shiners, and if you can get, the, yeah, if you can get the right angle, they look oh, amazing. Oh wow, they're actually colored up too. Yeah. So if I put a jar of like marbles and stuff in there, we could be spawning them. But uh, maybe you'll get better footage on the GoPro. Yeah, the GoPro. But uh, wow. Yeah. So if I get these in an aquarium, these are a great outdoor fish. I think they're native to like Alabama and Tennessee and that kind of stuff. And they're not cheap, and they look terrible when they're young, but boy, do they look good when they color up. Mm-hmm. So. They're like rainbows, it takes forever. Yep. In this tank, we have some orange laser Corydoras. That'll probably be another one you gotta get a GoPro going on, because you can't see anything from the top. These are all fish that I collected, like, yeah, I'm gonna put these, build a tank. Then I instead of the tanks. The tanks are arriving now, so they'll be able to go into tanks to be able to see them more. And the tanks are going against that wall over there? Yeah, so what we're actually gonna do, we're gonna remove these three rows eventually. Oh. So about half of the room will now be, I'm, I'm gonna say display tanks with me not really doing displays, but like <laughs> you could film and it would look good and, and that kind of stuff, so. So you don't have to say, but do you have plans for all these totes then if you're not gonna use them? Yeah, they're going to the store, the okay. store expansion. We're putting in a bunch of totes to sell uh, different goldfish and, and you know catfish and that kind of stuff. Nice. Um, koi. So in here, we just have a bunch of platinum half beaks. I know when I first saw this guy, I thought he was dead. And I went to touch nope, him and he got pissed. just a fat, fat lady. But yeah, and I'm trying to breed them and I've got about as much cover as you can get, still no babies. Because they're notorious for eating their own babies. Yeah. So I just keep feeding them and hoping that one day I'll wander by and go, hey, look. But yeah, they'll eat flakes, they'll eat pellets. They'll eat frozen blood worms. Anything that stays on the top. Once it goes down, they don't eat it, so. Is there anything down below or is it just these nope, guys? Nope, just them, because I was trying to breed. get them to breed. Dean unloaded a bunch of uh, Pocostemus slotus octopus on me, so that's what's jamming this up. But there's blue Silverado endlers in here. Well, I'd be happy to take some octopus if you don't need it. You can take all that. Oh, I will. All right. 100%. That's all yours then. Have you ever tried this outside, octopus? Huh. I'm going to have to try some. No, nope, I haven't tried it outside. So anyways, what was in here? Blue Silverado Endlers is what's in here. And uh, they're just, I had them in my old fish room, brought them over here. I love them, but they don't sell that well. I think part of the problem what happened is when I put stuff into totes, no one saw them anymore in the video, so they stopped buying them. Once I get them back into an aquarium, they'll start selling like hotcakes at the store because people go, oh, I want that fish. It's like, I had that fish sitting here for five years straight, you weren't buying it. And now that you see it, so there's a lot of that kind of... Well, if you had rainbows, you'd be able to see them in a tote. <laughs> Here I've got some shrimp and some gold neon platies, but they hide, they need to, you know, it's a little long-term breeding project. I bought the smallest fry. Nothing worth showing in this one, probably. Yeah, I don't see anything but... Random the guppies. They came over from the old fish room as just a few fry and Turns out if you feed them, they'll just keep making more. Amazing. Yeah. So eventually I'll move them over into the assorted uh, bin that we have and they just go to the store and people buy locally bred guppies. So now the gold neons are coming out. Oh yeah, now we see them. So oh, they've wow. got a real neon gold color to the platy. And uh, I'm hoping that kind of continues and as I grow them out and get bigger. But I, I literally bought them as like maybe half inch fries. So I've been really <laughs> growing them out. Uh, One of my favorites. Yep, all the turtles here. Maybe I'll grab some. Oh, and they're down here. Yeah, they definitely want food. Don't bite me. But these are full-grown mini musk turtles. We've bred them. I've made a ton, gave a bunch away because I can't sell them. They're just in stasis mode here until I'm going to get a big custom half land, half water aquarium for them so they'll breed again. Because it's fun to raise them, but um, I just have it since the move. They like to eat floating food. Yeah, when I when I moved, I had to give mine up, and uh, Turtle Girl has them now. Yeah. I miss them so much. 
So any defective fish go in here, sometimes they get chased down and eaten. Sometimes they live and just breed more. And uh, you know, like you can see, sometimes they'll breed. There's fry in here because they'll breed. And we put extra plants so they eat the plants too because they like to eat veggies. And these are just floating docks because if you're if you can sit far enough away, especially when the sun comes through the skylight, you can just see a bunch of turtles basking and they're enjoying it. Yeah, they were out before I walked but in here and ruined it. The minute they see you, they <laughs> bolt. They go, I'm out of here. So, yep, eating their, eating their pellets and their sticks. See some more shrimp here. A lot of shrimp in this one. Um, and there's also a bunch of normal bristle no red bristle nose. But yeah, there's, let's try to move some of the stuff. Like there's a lot of shrimp. And they're pretty, pretty nice red shrimp yeah, too. Yeah, those are really dark red. So I've just been playing with these guys a little bit. I do a little bit of separating like the other ones that we were looking at earlier where I had a bunch, they had oranges mixed in. These are just reds. And uh, oh, there's a big, big pleco down there. Oh, yeah, and the two. There's, there's some Barbados Corridoras. Dean took the rest of them. We, we knew there was one left we still got to get. But if you look at the sides of the tote, there's, there's thousands of shrimp in here. Yeah. They're all over. And uh, you can breed shrimp with plecos. I, or at least I've had a bunch of luck doing that. Yeah, myself. I've done that quite a bit. And uh, yeah. I love the plants growing out of the totes. I don't It just looks really it cool. It makes it hard to film. Never but that. it like you can see all the babies like if you if you can get out of the glare but you see all the babies right up in here like there's a million vienna guppy babies in all the top layer of plants like if i probably just yeah I, oh yeah you know there's there's a lot of so it's really good for growing babies really bad for seeing all the adult fish underneath that you want to to go oh are they doing okay do they look good all that kind of stuff so um but that's you know i've I, I, I like to colony breed guppies, and so this is how I do it. I, I always have auto feeders, and then also I come and I feed at least once a day. And same thing kind of going on over here. This is all guppy grass. You can see that the, the sunlight's on it here. And uh, in this tote, we have blue sword tails. And so they're a strain I've been working on that I got from Carl Trochu, who did a member talk for us. It's something that he kind of started developing. And they're kind of a powdery blue color, but you know, they also hide. If you watch here with the sunlight hitting it, you'll see them purling. The plants are so happy they'll release oxygen. Yeah, I can see the purling. I don't know if the camera's yeah, so picking it's, it up. You know, it's not, not a huge amount, but you know, again, I always like to point it out like, that can't be happening because you have an air stone. That's impossible. Like agitation is only one piece of what makes an aquarium go and oxygen go and all that. But this is usually at least a foot deep in the uh, the guppy grass. Let's see if we can get some of the fish to come into the, the sunlight, see some of the blue. They keep hiding underneath it. I'll put the food in this corner and we'll see if we can't get them to, to show themselves. But no one really enjoys keeping fish where you're like, if I'm lucky, we can see them today. You know, <laughs> like that's, you gotta be a hardcore like nerd to, to think that makes sense on some level. Not something you planned for when you got the totes? Well, I kind of knew it was that way, but I wanted to prove that I could build a- well, they're big. Yeah, that I could, I could build an urban fish farm. And I think I have proven that. And it does breed a lot of fish and it works. The problem is it's terrible for my job, which is YouTube and a fish store owner. But you can see some of those fry have red on them. And I actually have a tote down the way that is all babies from these guys. I basically go through once every three months and I sort them, keep all the ones with the least amount of red, the ones with the most blue, and continue on. So you see some have some splotches of red and we're basically trying to go from, this guy's real red, <laughs> trying to go from uh, a red sword tail to a blue one essentially. So yeah, there's little products to play with over years. Teacup platies, one of my absolute favorite fish. Unfortunately, duckweed got into here. Dang it. Oh, see all the all babies the right there? Yeah. yeah. This has pogo stem and slotus octopus filling up most of it. And then also the floating water sprite. And uh, these are going to go into a show tank because I, I really do kind of enjoy what they're doing. They're so dark red, too. You they can see one so of the good. red sword tails over there as in the plants <laughs> next to those blue brothers. Here, eat those guys. 
But yeah, there's there's probably like you wouldn't know it from seeing this. Probably 500 fish in here. Oh, I mean, just from seeing this, like they're when everywhere. You, when you start moving this, you start seeing a lot of adults and. I remember when you first got these, you just yeah, had a couple. I, I've been growing and working on these guys because I went through like three or four batches where they'd send me the incorrect fish and everything from, like I tried some on eBay, I tried some from another source, and they kept sending me sword tails. And these guys, like the these ones that are this big, these are full grown. So they don't get bigger than this. So, so they're a teacup platy, which I really enjoy. Now that I've pulled that back, it'll have room to grow for <laughs> a week. In here, I've got a rare fish that you can't see because of duckweed. So it is just Heteranger formosa, but the, it's a gold form, mm -hmm. which it took me a few years to find again. I had it once many years ago. And so now I do that, and then I hope <laughs> to get to see one every once in a while. But that's why Mr. Goldfish is learning to eat duckweed, so he can come in here and eat duckweed. Because I can net it out, but it just grows back in a week because it gets so much light. So well, hopefully get something on the GoPro there. This is Corvus Oskin's plant holding. When he moved, he bought a house and everything. So there's a lot of really rare plants that are just in stasis mode here. This might be Corfea or something, but growing up out of the water, just dump it in and hope for the best. This was part of when I bought all those platies. So you saw the, the neon gold ones, you saw the blue ones. This breeder also had copper green. And uh, it's not easy oh. to see. I saw top one. down, but they're a different kind of oh, wow. coppery. I don't know if it's coppery, but different. They're different. That's the key. Yeah, these are cool. And so I, yeah. I have a tendency to go, hey, someone likes something that I do, being very Addis Platys. Let me buy all the types you have. I'll grow them out, pick my favorites, and liquidate the others, and then eventually supply the store and that kind of stuff. So I'll spend two or three hundred dollars on fry grow them up. Some will be major disappointments. Some will be like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. And they're yeah. just now, so those also came in at like half an inch. They're just now really coloring up going, ooh, these might need a tank. These are looking pretty good. Yeah, I really like them. Yeah. So hopefully, I've seen a few fry in here. They're just kind of starting to produce fry because I think we have enough hornwort. That's what this plant is. I hate this plant. Yeah, me too. Only because like once it starts dying, it's a mess, but I was growing way too much of it in the, the cherry shrimp tank. This is kind of my failed experiments of mollies when I first moved in. I was like, I'm doing all the mollies, I love it. Because <laughs> I could never keep them alive at my place. And uh, you know, they're staying alive, but the ones that I got in were so old and kind of decrepit. These are fry that have now grown up. And now they're looking really healthy. And they are making fry, like you can usually hunt around and find some fry, but they're not you know, like I probably only have 20 fish in here, even though I started like, can you start with a hundred? Like, yeah, some went to the store, but they were just already really old because they came in adults. So, but I'm enjoying them and I don't know if they'll get necessarily a tank, but for now they do their job. They entertain me. So is your goal to eventually get rid of all the tubs then or? No, I don't think so. Cause I, I still personally like the tubs. It just makes it for you hard. It makes it for me hard to teach people. I need some tanks, more tanks to teach people. Uh, so lots of panda guppies in here. We have way too many. I make way too many than the store sells. I still love this fish though. Yeah, it's my favorite guppy. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them in here. So I haven't gotten rid of them. I probably just need to make a display tank and then maybe people will buy them again. We have that problem a lot. If we don't put them, if we don't make them look extra cool at the store, people go, oh, I don't like those. Mm -hmm. and the minute we can take the same fish, a week later, that customer's like, wow, when'd you get these? They're amazing. <laughs> like, oh. Gold mollies. So these ones are more like the dragon blood mollies, I think, where they've got the red eyes and everything. Stop hiding, buddy. They're following me a hand for food instead of. And the glare's really bad on this one, too. Yeah. Oh, plus I can move the, move that back, that'll help a little bit. Get the, I see a couple of them down there. Yeah, yeah so, some. but they're the same thing of like started with a hundred, now I'm just starting to get them to breed again. Some of this stuff for me just takes years of like, oh, it was hard to find, I had to start with fry, or I had to start with old ones. So this tank down here, this is all the fry from the sword tails you saw before. So the ones we're making blue, oh, yeah. these are like the grow outs of like, yep, too much red. 
let's go ahead and you know grow them out over here and then eventually they need to go to the store I just haven't taken them to the store or had anyone come pick them up and this is all pothos growing from this giant plant here that's growing underwater lots of roots yeah, I love that but yeah I just put that back in just like that and I feed them that's what I do and then an odd observation that I have is that all of these mangroves have done amazing just doing this. <laughs> like, and so what I do is like every few days I feed, I, I pour water into my apothos. And then I come over here and I do this. And that's all I do. I, they, I don't know how they could possibly be doing better here than like, but I've given you a whole tote or an aquarium and they just don't do as well sometimes. So not sure what the, the magic is there. Here I've got yellow labs that desperately need to find a home. They've just been living in my fish room kind of orphans. Oh, yeah. But now you've got all these vines. It's kind of cool, kind of a cool yellow and uh, plant thing going there. I think I'd see African cichlids in here. I still love Africans. I just don't do it a whole lot anymore. This has got a uh, long green fin, or long dragon Oh wow, fin. that guy's a monster. Yeah. Wow. Yep. There's babies in here. I haven't, they need more cover and I need to feed them, get an auto feeder to really start raising more babies, but. Wow, that guy's huge. Yeah, he's a grandpa for sure. There he goes. <laughs> yep. He's going, oh, I'm not going to cover. So then we got nothing. Then we've got some white rice fish and a guppy jumped over, some, a pregnant guppy. And now that's why we have all these guppies. <laughs> that's funny. So that, there's a, there's a method to my madness. That's why there's never two guppies in a row or two of the same species. Because if one was to ever jump, I don't want like, oh, there went two strains. Like mm -hmm. that sucks. So. Do these sell well at the store? Very well. Uh, now we can get better versions, like some better platinums and all that. So these just kind of chill out here and eventually I'll do something with them. But um, yeah, platinum or just rice fish in general, super hot. And Dean kind of can't make enough, kind of can't buy enough. I'm, you know, I'm not big on like the black ones and stuff. I want them to look good in a pond. This is uh, just an assorted, this is another tote where it just had some guppies in it. You're going to see like, don't you have a bunch of those? Like, yeah, guppies sell really well. <laughs> Same with this tote, this is just a sort of guppies, but there's a billion, I mean, see back there is how many there are. Fry everywhere. There's a billion in here. But it's because, you know, at the average fish store, you don't know that just normal sort of fancy guppies are one of the most sold fish. Mm -hmm. People come in and they can go, ooh, that one looks cool, that one looks cool, that one's cool. They end up buying 10, where they might have only bought five Neon Tetras. Yeah, I learned that in my Breeding Fish for Profit series. Like I had, yep. I had individual strains and then it turned out like all my just random mix sold way faster. Well and what happens is anytime we're not 100% sure what something is we put it into the mix. So if it's like oh did that thing jump I can't be sure I don't know if that where that jumped from let's go ahead and put it in here because we never want to cross contaminate so. Yeah when I when I moved I just threw all my different strains of guppies in one tanks and mm -hmm. now in one tank and now I get some pretty radical looking guppies. This came in that same batch of uh, black mo or of all the mollies, and you can see like some of the skinny ones are the stragglers of the old ones, and the new ones that have grown up are those big, robust ones. And then now they're making fry. So that's that whole cycle of like, ugh, they were kind of really old, not producing fry, barely. Nurse those along. Those ones raised up. Now they're making some fry, and then as this starts to fill in, we'll see more and more fry survive. So, yeah, these guys actually do need. Uh, floating food. This is a group of uh, clown killies. One and of my favorite fish. Yeah, my goal is to breed them, which I don't have any cover in here yet, but I'll feed them an extra little dose of their micro pellet extreme food. So just a little bit goes in and they'll, you know, they come over and chomp it eventually. And if you feed just a little bit, 80% stays floating. So there's still snails in there that'll eat stuff that goes down, like a little bit went down, but it'll continue to that. They might not eat if we're standing here, but slowly, slowly. This is a fish that no one's ever breeding enough of and they're always in high mm -hmm. demand. 
This was my number one selling fish on my website. I believe it. They sell really well at the store too and we can never buy enough. But there they go. Yep, just a little auto feeder and I had to raise these up from tiny things and I think I started with six or eight. So they're, they are reproducing, I just don't have nearly enough cover. You can colony breed these. I used to do that way back when I was a new hobbyist. 55 gallon tank with these and plecos is what I did and it, it was great. So just need a lot of floating cover to let the baby survive. This is a rare live bear, the Metallicus live bear. So if they're a good specimen, the underbody is all black and more of a silver color on the rest. Um, started out, I think I got these from Preston John. I think I got like 10 or something now. There's quite a few. I just haven't, you know, put any cover in. And so that's all the fish are in there. Like, yeah, you can get 20 or 30 in 100 gallons. But if I had the same cover as, you know, one of the other tanks would be three or 400. Mm -hmm. So just let them eat and do their thing and you can, yeah, maybe the GoPro will show some of their black markings and stuff. They're just kind of a, they're a nerd fish. They're not, the average person doesn't fall in love with them. I mean, some of them look really good. Yeah. In theory, there's some better rubras in here. <laughs> and I got these from Randy, he was breeding them and they went in here and I feed them, but I can't see them. So <laughs> I could have killed them all or there could be 400. And they're, they're reclusive anyway, so. But once I get a, a, a goldfish in there to clean up the, the duckweed, we'll know what what happened long term. This is maybe the rarest fish I own, Propelia intermedia, the blue-eyed live bearer. And I don't know if I've made more than like two babies ever. And they are so skittish. So they're pretty much the worst aquarium fish to show on camera. Nice. But they have the, one of the coolest blue eyes you've ever seen. And oh, see, they're oh. real quick. So I know the adults still are fine, but they, they don't make a whole lot of fry and they'll prey on their fry a little bit. So I'm hoping as this fills out more and more, I'll start seeing like, ooh, look, a fry, another one. We'll see. Japanese Leertail Guppies, one of the first editions when I was like, I need to make more fish, what should I make? And uh, the store said these, so we Lots make- Lots of fry. Yeah, a lot of little fry. Once, it, it's, it's a weird thing, you'll make nothing until there's enough. And what's enough, you'll know it when you see a ton of fry. Like there's no, I've tried, like let me put the same amount over here. It has to do with, you know, males, females, adult ratios, how many fry, how much you're feeding. I've always liked these guys. Yeah, they're fun. This is all the uh, rosy barbs that came out of the 800 gallon tank. And they look amazing except they would harass Ladybird and bite on her tail a little bit. So eventually I'm just going to take them into the store and let someone buy the best looking rosy barbs ever. Yeah, they, they're, they're pretty They're so stunning. good. The males have all that color. I mean, the blacks, are you seeing the reds and the blacks? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's captured on camera, but oh, yeah, it is. I fell in love with this store, or with this fish in a store 15 years ago when they had a full grown adult and I was like, I have to own these someday. And I did. Not an expensive fish. It's like a five dollar fish. Yeah, they're pretty inexpensive. Not bad. Some more. These have Celebes half beaks. We'll see if I can. I'm testing. I think. Yeah, one of the. I want to see how much air I could put through one of the. That's a different style, a little bit. You can oh, put a lot one. of. Yeah, these guys get a little bit of a red tinge to them. They hang out lower, where the other ones hung out higher on average. So. Yeah, you can see them. Not too many fish left. This is empty. This is a prototype for the store. So this is where we would have koi and goldfish and that kind of stuff. You could see the name tag of what's in there, kind of see what it is. And then if you had to catch or wanted a better look, oh, two hand job, I guess. You just slide it right back. And now you could kind of catch and look and, and all that. And then when you walk away, they won't just sail right out because koi and goldfish really usually come from ponds and they like to jump. And so this is the system we'll be using. We've used a similar system to this back in the day, but we'll have, you know, maybe 12 or 14 of these to do some different stuff Looks in. Looks like racks from a refrigerator. Yeah, it's actually for closets. <laughs> oh, okay. And we cut it and uh, you just buy them at Home Depot and they're expensive, but they're coated in plastic or this rubber and they work pretty good. So this is also, if you have raccoons and that kind of stuff mm. and you're doing ponds outside, I've done a lot of covers with this because still, I still want the rain to get in. I still want the bugs to get in outside. All of that stuff to happen. The sunlight, 
but I just want to keep too many prying hands, whether it's kids or raccoons or whatever out of it. And at the store, same thing, kids, and uh, we just don't want fish jumping. But you know, we'll probably put rice fish and other stuff, top-down viewing fish in here, depending on the season. So, you know, shabunkins, goldfish, sarasa comets, koi, rice fish, maybe Chinese bitterlings, all that kind of stuff that can do well in ponds. Maybe a good white clouds. Um, but yeah, that's we always. I try to always prototype stuff and test stuff before it ever goes to a store or live. All empty uh, up until we get these name tags, basically. The Randy's discus went to Candy's house, and then these are wild corridors we brought back from Peru that Randy had, but ended up uh, moving and not keeping, so they're in here. When they come out, they're big and chunky. It's just getting them to come out. That, that's that hole. There they go. Oh, wow. So yeah, there's a whole big school of them. And those will probably go in a display tank at some point. They just haven't yet. And then we've already started breaking down this wall. And this is so easiest way to see how these totes are working. Water comes in here, we can adjust. Or this is air actually, this is air. You can adjust. Water comes in right through here, squirts down. And then this is where the overflow. And so we can drain the water by turning it down. You can also, I set it at this level uh, and it would just flow out. And that's a basic setup on how I run all my aquariums and all my totes at the store, at home, everything, so I can auto water change. I got these at DACO, D-A-C-O. I might have one at the end. Every video, people ask every time, mm -hmm. where do you buy them? And then they go, oh geez, those are expensive. They're like 200 bucks a piece, so not cheap. They last forever, that's a bonus, uh, but they are not cheap. Let's see if I have that tag, because that's what your comment section will be. Usually, did I take it off already? Nope, right there. So if you show them this tag right here, and they go online, you can buy these totes. Right there. There you go. And then you're going to go, hey, they won't ship it to me halfway across the country. And you're going to go, yep, you have to find these from a local supplier, because <laughs> they're expensive and they're bulky to ship. Yep, I remember moving all these in here. It wasn't fun. I think the last guys I got to feed is Murphy, or I mean, Ladybird. So we'll do some flake and we gotta do some clams. He goes through, she goes through clams wicked fast these days. This is like maybe three or four days worth of 2.2 pounds. Yeah, something people need to realize when they get into these bigger fish is the food bill adds up fast. This is $25 in clams is what we sell. Them for. Maybe it's 30, I can't remember if it's 25 or 30. I think the price went up. but. That food bill, you know, so you might be looking at 50 bucks a week in clams just for a fish this size. So it's always at least one good handful and usually more than one good handful. There you go, ladybird. Just going to put more in or? I don't think these mics will pick up the crunching, but it's pretty impressive. And then I distract the rest of the fish on the other side with some, some flake or pellet or whichever I'm doing. Roughly how many uh, neon tetras? Roughly 500 went in. Jeez, it doesn't even look like 100. Yeah, the big tank kind of swallows them up. Where it's <laughs> it like, really does. I, when I put 100 in, I was like, it looks like there's six. These are all, so you know, I, I kind of, this is kind of my like, <laughs> I'm a cool guy. All these wild juraparis are wild caught. I caught them in Peru, and now they're looking good here, and hopefully I'll breed them. Like, this is one of my favorite fish I've always kept in the hobby. And the last trip, I specifically go, like, what do you want to catch? And I said, well, I would love to catch these guys, Amazon puffers, and I'd love to show where neon tetras come from. The only one we didn't deliver on was neon tetras. So I hope to go back and be able to film the habitat and maybe catch neon tetras and stuff. We went to where they've caught them before, but it was already dried up, and so there was no water left to catch them. Mm. So there was no neon tetras to be caught there. So this might look like a lot of food, and it is, but there's also uh, 18 horse face loaches living in the gravel that gotta eat. These guys want to filter feed for a long time. There's 500 tetras. They're just stupid and still feeding on ladybird's crumbs instead of hitting all the flake. One thing I do like about flake is it will continue to stay in the water column. Whereas 
uh, a pellet food normally just sinks and feeds these guys really well, but we want the neon tetras to get uh, nice, big, fat, big meals. So, yeah, the plants are starting to grow in. You know, it's taking a little while, but I need to put dedicated lighting on. I'm just waiting for the aquarium co-op lights. Is really Makes sense. You know, I've got the shimmer going on and, and that. And I, I like that effect, but I I love having it fully planted like I did when I had clam loaches, and that's where I want to go back to. And uh, I think it looks better this way than with all the rosy barbs. I mean, the rosy barbs are cool, but this just seems Yeah, I mean, peaceful. I've done a few things, and you, you, some of it is you don't know what will look cool until you do it, and then sometimes there's instant regret of, like, that doesn't look cool at all, but it's two days of work to undo it, so you don't <laughs> for a while. And then if I made a video, people would be like, you're just changing fish too quick, and that's, that's a valid statement sometimes. So I usually try to do something and let it, let it marinate for like a year or see how I like it, unless I really hate it or someone's getting hurt. You can see her tail's doing great now. Um, her teeth are actually getting kind of long, as my wife was noticing as well. And so we might step it up to bigger, thicker clams uh, from the grocery store like we have had to do for Murphy. Yeah. So it might be, you know, we're going to start, I told my wife, pick some up next time you're at the grocery store and we'll start trying to acclimate her to them because they don't like it when they're like, this is not my food, it's too hard to crunch. So you got to kind of get them hungry and wanting to crunch it open. Sometimes you got to start by maybe hitting it with a hammer a little bit. You don't want to obliterate it, but enough to be like, oh, they finally got through it. Isn't that right, Ladybird? Because her teeth is almost fully grown again. Because she, when before we moved, she had freaked out and rammed in the glass and broke off that left tooth. Oh yeah, I forgot. Or it was like that. half as much. So now it's almost the same as the other one, and we yeah. think that'll be good biting power again. That's one way to grind down the teeth. Yeah, <laughs> not the best way by any means. But uh, if we, you know, if we just walk in here to do something, she'll flip water out of the tank because she's so excited to get food. <laughs> if we haven't been around in a little bit. Well, all right. Well, thank you, sir, for the tour. Yeah. Oh, I should probably move that back. Wide <laughs> angle. Yeah. Well, next time will be a lot more. I know my. I think my custom tanks. You know, there's three of them showing up. One for my bedroom and two. For in here, I think they show up next week, so we'll probably start filming, setting some of that stuff up. We still got to tear some more stuff down, um, but you learn. A fish room, the one tip I have is it's always evolving. No mm -hmm. matter how much money and time you put into it, you just keep going. I want to do this now. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to try this. So there's no perfect fish room. It's always evolving for me. One tank at a time. That's right. <laughs>